God has a plan for young and old. Let's talk about His plan today right here on book, chapter, and verse. Wonderful words, wonderful words of life. Beautiful words, wonderful words, wonderful words of life. Greetings and welcome to book, chapter, and verse. I'm Jeff Archie. I really appreciate you being here today and to join me as we simply take the Bible and as our show is titled, we simply seek book, chapter, and verse for the things we are to do in our daily walk. So please join us weekly as we look at God's Word together. There is nothing more refreshing than to turn to the Word of God and know His will for our lives. And now, throughout our broadcast, you're going to see our contact information on the screen, lower left side here, and know we are appreciative to hear from our viewers. And stay tuned, for at the end of our program, we offer Bible study material absolutely free, and I'll give you that contact information. You can get it and continue the study of the Bible in your own home. And as you see on the screen, we have a variety of free study aids to assist you in your home study. But for now, let's consider our book, chapter, and verse this week, Ecclesiastes 1, 16 through 18. Let's think on this today as Solomon, the wise man, penned the following. He said, I communed with my heart, saying, Look, I have attained greatness and have Jerusalem. Or I've gained more wisdom than all who were before me in Jerusalem. Oh, my heart has understood great wisdom and knowledge. And I set my heart to know wisdom and to know madness and folly. I perceive that this is also is grasping for the wind. For in much wisdom is much grief. And he who increases knowledge increases sorrow. Kind viewer, we realize that God granted unto Solomon wisdom and understanding. We can go back to 1 Kings chapter 2, 11 through 14 and 1 Kings chapter 5 and verse 12 and note that. And 1 Kings 4, 29 speaks of his wisdom and knowledge even as the sand that is on the seashore. Now, when he was used for the Lord, Solomon was excellent. But when he looked toward the world, which he is referring to here in our book, chapter, and verse, and he made the wrong choices, his wisdom and his knowledge were invested in the wrong places. You know, I heard it said a few years ago that many times our choices are not good and bad, but sometimes the decision is what is better or what is best. You know, some things in and among themselves are good, but when pursued without God, they can take us from God. There's a lot of hobbies and things we can enjoy, but if they're going to pull us from God, they in essence become our idol or we find our satisfaction within those things. I was reading an excerpt from a book, In God's Image, penned by a friend and brother in the Lord, Chad Ramsey. And it prompted the thoughts that I wish for us to consider today. Thus, with this broadcast, let's think on these things as a guide of planning for our young people and a reminder for those of us who are older. Regardless of our age, let's be certain that we are not following the things that have us grasping for the wind. Isn't that what Solomon said in our book, chapter, and verse? Have you ever tried to grasp the wind? You can't do it. You can't grasp the wind. You can't grasp something that we can see. And Solomon is saying in this text, it's all futile. Yes, I looked at my heart. I've got the wisdom. I've got all this. 
And it's like I am grasping for the wind. Today, let's cease grasping for the wind and let's put the right things in order. Let's talk about pleasure. Now, I like things that are pleasant and good. And there are things that I enjoy doing that gives me pleasure. But let's keep it in the right context and staying in the book of Ecclesiastes. And we look at this text together and we consider what Solomon is about to bring forth. In chapter 2 of Ecclesiastes, note the following. I said in mine heart, Go to now, I will prove thee with mirth, therefore enjoy pleasure, and behold, this also is vanity. I said of laughter, it is mad, and of mirth, what doeth it? I sought in mine heart to give myself unto wine, yet acquainting my heart with wisdom, and to lay hold on folly, till I might see what was that good for the sons of men which they should do under the heaven all the days of their life. Now let's think about this. Solomon said, in other words, I wanted to keep my same faith, but I wanted to see how the other half lives. I wanted to hold on to the same faith, but I wanted to see what does the other half do? How do they live? You know, there is nothing wrong with pleasure or enjoyment of the things God has given us. However, it is when that pleasure and enjoyment takes us away from our faithfulness to God. It's when that that thing takes us further from God. Think about Moses. Moses choosing rather to share ill treatment with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. Hebrews 11, 25. And God also gives us warnings when our pleasures of life take our priorities. In 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 7 through 12, that text ends with a warning to those that had pleasure in unrighteousness. You see, when we take those things are, that are of the world, and there are some things that are good we can enjoy, but it can pull us away from God. The reprobate mind of man in Romans 1.32 pursues all unrighteousness and has a pleasure in such resulting in a life that is worthy of death. Again, Romans 1.32. James rebuked those Christians with their pleasures when he said, you have lived in pleasure on the earth and been wanton. You have nourished your hearts as in a day of slaughter, James 5.5. 5. In other words, you had all the pleasure And you are still wanting. You pursued the pleasure and you're not satisfied. You departed from God who could fulfill all things. And your pleasures took over your passion for God. Here's what's dangerous, kind friends. I think, for example, of families. Who, have a, who would have a child that was exceptional in athletics. Let's just say a good soccer player or a good volleyball player. And yet it seemed like that they pursued every avenue with that to the point that you didn't see them at worship. You did not see a first and foremost God in their lives. You see how pleasure, nothing wrong with that, how pleasure can pull us away from being God's possession. And then we're grasping for the wind. We lose our focus and the pleasures of this world in essence becomes our God. Now back to Ecclesiastes 2. Solomon is going to move 
and show us the dangers of pleasures and where they can take us. And now he's going to look at possessions. Picking up, if you will, in Ecclesiastes chapter 2, verse 4. I made my works great. I built myself houses. I planted myself vineyards. I made myself gardens and orchards. And I planted all kinds of fruit trees in them. I made myself water pools from which to water the growing trees of the grove. I acquired male and female servants and had servants born in my house. Yes, I had greater possessions of herds and flocks than all who were in Jerusalem before me. I also gathered for myself silver and gold and the special treasures of kings and of the provinces. I acquired male and female singers, the delights of the sons of men, and musical instruments of all kinds. So I became great and excelled more than all who were before me in Jerusalem. Also my wisdom remained with me. Whatever my eyes desired, I did not keep from them. I did not withhold my heart from any pleasure. For my heart rejoiced in all my labor, and this was my reward from all my labor. Then I looked on all the works that my hands had done, and on the labor in which I had told. And indeed, all was vanity and grasping for the wind. There was no profit under the sun. Folks, that one shakes me. That, that one, here's Solomon. He had everything. Everything that his heart desired. But did you notice that it did not feel what he needed? I'm reminded of a track that I've had for many years that when you look on the front of it, it shows a hand coming up through possessions and it says, do our possessions possess us? Do they take our time more than what we would give to God? Please recall how the rich young man in Matthew 19, 22 went away from Christ sorrowful, for he had great possessions. He wished not to follow the Christ. He wanted the maximum for the minimum. He wanted to possess salvation, but he wasn't willing to pay the price for it. You know, in this regard, a work ethic can go awry and all the things in this world cannot please us. I believe it's worthy for us to go to the New Testament and to think of the words of Christ in Matthew 6, 19 through 21. Within the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus warned and told us how not to lay up ourselves treasures upon this earth. How that we need to invest on the things above. Because you see on this earth, moth and rust corrupts. Thieves break through and steal. But he says, lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt and where thieves do not break through and steal. And then here's his point. Where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Kind friend, do our possessions possess us? Do we want to attain so much that we leave God out of the equation? And then we just keep wanting to add possessions and add possessions to fill our happiness, to fill ourselves, and we just keep grasping for the wind. Pleasures and possessions. Now, once again, we understand people have possessions to do what they need to do and live and all that. We know that. Pleasure's nothing wrong. It's when those things take over God's place. And then we wonder what happened. Where did I go wrong? 
At one time, I didn't have all these problems. Is because you moved God out and you moved goods in. We moved the Savior out and we moved the savings in. And we're grasping for wind. Stay with me now. We go now to Ecclesiastes 4. Let's look at popularity. Pleasures can take us away. Possessions can take us away. And so can popularity. I mean, it's nice to be liked. But watch what happened with Solomon in Ecclesiastes 4, 13 through 16. Better a poor and wise youth than an old and foolish king who will be admonished no more. For he comes out of prison to be king, although he was born poor in his kingdom. I saw all the living who walk under the sun. They were with the second youth who stands in his place. There was no end of all the people over whom he was made king. Yet those who come afterward will not rejoice in him. Surely this also is vanity and grasping for the wind. You know, being a sports fan, it's interesting to read things. I, I'm going to kind of turn back a few years ago. Now, as I'm recording this episode here and as you're viewing it, the illustration I'm going to bring forth at the time of your viewing is about five years old, but it proves a key point. About five years ago, Robert Griffin III set a single-season jersey sales record on NFLShop.com. Peyton Manning was number two on the list, and during that time, retirement nostalgia of Ray Lewis, who was retiring, shot up to number three. A player by the name of Colin Kaepernick was number four. Tom Brady was number five. Now, folks, today, if you were to look at jersey sales of NFL.com, you probably would not find any of those names there. Possibly, at this point, a couple. But things change. The NFL also keeps track of team sales. In that same time, 2012 and 13, the San Francisco 49ers were the top selling team for the first time since at least 1979. They were number two in 94 and 95. The Baltimore Ravens were number two. Now, folks, I can tell you that has changed considerably. I mention all that to say why. Here we go. Popularity comes and popularity goes. The hot television program at one time is now in reruns. The television or the theater blockbuster that broke all records, you can catch in the middle of the night on TV now in a rerun. Popularity comes, popularity goes. I think back in 2 Samuel 15, how the people increased continually with Absalom in 2 Samuel 15, 12. But in 2 Samuel 15, 13, the hearts of the men of Israel were after Absalom. But after Absalom's death, it ceased their direction in loyalty. Popularity only lasts as long as one that follows man's path. Then we change to this one, we change to that one. But here is your answer to popularity, kind friends. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge Him, and He shall direct your paths. Now as we bring this study to a close on book, chapter, and verse, Again, there's nothing wrong with pleasure, possessions, or popularity. But if they come between us and our God, 
and they become more of the priority than God, we're asking for trouble. When we put those things in place of our satisfaction and think that's all we need, we're going to miss it spiritually and sadly eternally. That's why I find later in Ecclesiastes 12, Solomon said, Remember now thy Creator in the days of thy youth, while the evil days come not, nor the years draw nigh, when thou shalt say, I have no pleasure in them. You keep your faith in God as one young. You root that faith. You keep it strong. And look at what will be before you. Look at what you will have. It doesn't matter of the pleasures or the possessions. It doesn't matter of the popularity. You'll have things in life of pleasure and that's good. But God is first and foremost and He's strong. And you keep that thing in check and your possessions in check and popularity in check because the key thing is to trust God and lean on Him. Isn't it something that near the end of that book, Ecclesiastes, that tells us about not grasping for the wind, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Or in other words, being a southern boy from the country, let's just shuck the corn off the cob and let it show. Let's hear the conclusion of the whole matter. With everything Solomon had done, bring it down and bring it home, Solomon. Let's hear the conclusion of the whole matter Fear God and keep His commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. This is the whole of man. This is what it's all about. Fear God. Keep His commandments. And that guides us of the things of pleasure, of the possessions, and the popularity the pleasure, God will enrich blessings unlike anything you'll see. The possessions, He grants us because what we use, we use to His glory. The popularity, let's give God the glory and not ourselves. So kind friends, think on these things. And let's quit grasping for the wind. Let's grasp faith, faith in God, faith that moves us to see the beauty of repentance, faith that moves us to repentance and where we can confess Christ as the Son of God, and faith that moves us to be baptized into Christ for the remission of our sins and to be added to His church, Acts 2.47. We're raised to walk in a newness of life, Romans 6, 4 through 6. We're also raised and we walk as a new creation in Christ Jesus, 2 Corinthians 5, 17. We're His workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works. We see the pleasures ahead. We see how to manage the possessions. We see the popularity and know that that should all go to God. God's way is the best way and guides us to, way, to the way that we should go. We walk faithful in newness of life, being the workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works, Ephesians 2.10. Oh, kind friends, what a beautiful thought. A beautiful thought that we can always embrace and walk faithful for our Lord Jesus Christ. Let's stop today grasping for the wind with all the things of the world and let's take a hold of book, chapter, and verse in God's blessings. Let's enjoy this hymn together. I'll be back shortly. We praise Thee, O God, for the Son of Thy love, for Jesus. 
Jesus who died and is now gone above. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Revive us again. We praise thee, O God, for thy spirit of light who has shown us our Savior and scattered our night. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Revive us again. All glory and praise to the Lamb that was slain who has borne all our sins and has cleansed every stain. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Revive us again. All glory and praise to the God of all grace who has bought us and sought us and guided our ways. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Revive us again. Revive us again. Fill each heart with thy love. May so be rekindled with fire from above. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Revive us again. In Jesus' name. It's not the things of the world that's going to fill our needs, but the doctrine that's sound that's of God. It was good in Titus 2 for aged men, aged women, younger men and younger women, and it's great and good for us today. Thanks for joining me on Book, Chapter, and Verse, and I'll see you next time. Wonderful words, wonderful words, wonderful words of life, beautiful words. Wonderful words, wonderful words of life.